in terms of the Marketplace Sustainability Leadership Award, this is a brand new award for this year. And this is really reflecting the direction of travel that our campaign is heading, heading to. And what we want to do is really, really reward transforming and leading companies. And so we're just going to the introduction section, and I'll take you through what the, camp, what the category is about. So this, this award is recognizing businesses that are transforming their product service offer, supply chains, and marketing by inviting short and long-term environmental, social, and economic trends into core business decision making. There's a lot of key words within that phrase that we really want to focus on. So firstly, we want to hear from companies that are actually considering how the mega trends are what we call the forces for change, which we'll reference in a minute. So what are the key social, environmental, and economic trends that are impacting both their products and services, their supply chains, as well as their customers? And how, what, how are these companies actually using that information about the mega trends and making a difference to their product services, supply chains, and marketing in order to address them? And how are they taking this information and making it crucial to their business and strategic decisions that they're making? Um, just a bit more information about the context or background on, on this award. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is really reflecting the change in our campaign and our new campaign goal around every business to thrive through identifying how their products and service offer, supply chain, and customer networks can contribute to creating more sustainable lifestyles to everyone in the business, that everyone that business touches both today and in the future. And the fact that we have 7 billion people alive today and 9 billion people forecasted for 2050, the goal is to ensure we have 9 billion sustainable and quality lifestyles by 2050. But we're not going to be able to get there unless businesses today change the way their business models and their products and services are created um, and how they interact with consumers um, and engage them to act more sustainably, as we described in the other two categories. So the point of this category is to look at all these things in turn. So it's almost a combination of both the Supply Chain Award and the Customer Engagement on Sustainability Award and looking at that holistically. And Maria's going to talk a bit more about some examples of uh, what we're looking for in this award. So you'll see at the end of the introduction, again, some examples of what we're looking for, which will elaborate on those. The first two are around innovating products or services resulting in significant long-term benefits for environment and people, or driving change across the whole value chain, moving towards a circular economy. And you'll note that we reference elements of this, both in the Sustainable Supply Chain and Customer Engagement Award. So if you are considering entering more than one award, you can pull information from those and put them into this award, as it's a culmination of everything. Another example is raising the bar and shaping wider industry and policy standards through collaboration. One past example could include work that B&Q have done around the FSC standard. Just using their industry alone would not, would not go anywhere near enough to solve the, solve the problem of deforestation. Publishers have since got on board, and you'll probably all have heard the story of Harry Potter being published on FSC paper. But the question would be if every single publisher then also made all of their books from FSC paper, would this be enough? To sustain, a future demand, to sustain a future demand for trees. If not, who else needs to get involved? And they're the things you need to think about when thinking about external collaboration and stakeholder engagement here. Another example might be running a holistic employee engagement program, spanning the whole business, empowering teams to drive sustainability plans forward. This goes way beyond what we sort of usually deem as employee engagement but actually starts looking at ensuring all roles within the whole business are playing a specific contribution to the long-term business, business vision for sustainability across the entire business. The last example there, again, is something that we'd be looking for in previous awards too, creating breakthrough solutions with both customers or suppliers which go beyond good practice and compliance. And as with the other awards, we'll quickly go through the specific questions. So the first scored section is in part three. And this is looking at what you're doing and why. And this section is worth 30%. 
And what you'll notice um, in this application is that the scoring differs for from the other two awards that we mentioned previously. And um, the main difference is in the impact section, which I'll mention when we get to that point. So this one is worth 30%. The two questions in this section are worth 15% each. The first one is, what are the key environmental and social issues you've identified as affecting the sustainability of your business model in the long term? And how have you identified this as an issue? So what we're looking for here is, um, for example, looking at the forces for change. And I'm just going to quickly show you our forces for change document, which you can find on our website under the Visioning the Future program. So looking at things such as the forces for change, what are the short and long term issues that your business is facing? So what are the wider general issues? So things such as resource scarcity or um, other natural resources or things such as um, your ongoing talent pool. So for example, STEM subjects are in high demand. So how are you going to ensure that you have enough um, talented workers out there to, uh, to join your company? And the second question is, what are the impacts, both the risks and opportunities, that these issues are going to have in your products and services and your business model? So while the first question looks at specifically what are the wider general issues that are going to affect you, in question 3.2, we want to know how is, this impact, how is this issue actually going to impact on your business? And actually, what is that going to mean for your business, both, again, in the short term and in the long term? So, for example, in terms of dealing with resource scarcity, you might need to change your products and services or the resources that you use in order to make these um, as a result because there's going to be fewer or less of them, or none, potentially. Um, and in terms of dealing with your talent resources, if there's not going to be enough skilled workers, how is that going to change your business and what actually can you, can you be doing about that in the future? We'll move on to the next section now, which again is how. What you'll notice about this section is that it's longer and worth more scores than this section in the other two awards. The main reason for that is this whole award is about your business looking both short and long term and thinking about transforming its whole business model. Elements of that may include real changes to the way that your business operates and potentially taking some risks within that. So that's why in this section we're asking a lot more information than in the others and why it's more heavily weighted than the impact section for this award. You'll see that it's split into four separate sections which I'll cover in a second. And each section is worth 10% so equal weighting. What we must see here is that the issues you've outlined in section 3 are integrated into all of the four areas highlighted in these boxes. Again, that might be what's slightly different to the other two awards because this is about a holistic approach for your whole business rather than just looking at an initiative that focuses just on supply chain or just with your customers. So the first section we ask about is a new product or service development or innovation around those. I think this is quite self-explanatory. It includes altered or amended products, services, or operations, and specific new innovations that you are working on. Again, this can include work that you're working on at the moment and is in planning rather than something that has specifically been innovated already. We just want to understand how you're starting to deal with the long-term long and short-term issues you've outlined previously. The second two boxes do cover areas that we've covered in the other two awards. So working with your supply chain, again this will include collaborations and innovations with your suppliers and how they're involved in your programs and supporting a more sustainable business model. So again if you've if you are thinking of applying for the Supply Chain Award, you can put some of the information into this section as well. Same for the next box, engaging your customers, as this also includes influencing customer choices and behavior. So again, a lot of examples that Michelle covered for that award can be included here. Finally, we ask for collaboration with wider stakeholder groups. This section is often included in other BITC leadership awards because we understand that for real wide impact, no one business can do it alone. And collaboration is needed across a wide range of stakeholder groups. So that's why here 
we want to know how you're collaborating with others and who's involved. So this may include others in your industry, it may include suppliers and customer businesses, but also partner organisations, others across different industries and governments as well. And in the last section in this application around impact, as I mentioned earlier, this section is worth the most. It's worth, um, oh, sorry, sorry. This section is not worth as much as in the other applications. It's worth 30%, so the same as the first section, 15% for each question. And this is because, unlike with the other awards, we think that some of the impacts here might be also projected impacts, not just impacts that have happened. And we recognize that a lot of the businesses that are going to be applying for this type of award, that the impacts of the um, programs that Maria mentioned in point three, or point four rather, might not have come to fruition yet. And that's the reason for the change of score. So the first part is around the, and benefits to the environment and people. Similarly to the other awards, we want to see what difference has this program made, so both to the environment in terms of reducing environmental impact, as well as to community and helping people to be more sustainable. And it should include impacts of all four points mentioned in point four, so from your customers to your supply chain, employees, and your community or other stakeholder program. The second point is around benefits to your business. So as a result of changing your business model, product service offer, or your supply chain, or your communication with your customers, or all of the above, how has actually this helped your business? So things such as um, increasing profit to more efficient efficiency savings, increased reputation, etc. We also want to see not just current impacts, but projected impacts in both the short and longer term. 